I read through the Bible, not the whole Bible every night, but we get through the Bible eventually. Um, and uh, so we've been on Job recently. And it's funny because, well, Job is one of my favorite books. The first couple chapters are actually my, probably some of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. But we were reading through Job, and we were getting through Job. Um, and then when it was my birthday earlier this month, um, July 11th, we were supposed to be reading Job uh, 3, and, and I decided we'll, we'll skip that one for today. We'll read some Psalms or something that night, because uh, or something else. I don't remember what we read that night, but it was something else because I, I didn't really feel like reading chapter 3 of Job on my birthday, because then <laughs> the first words I would say on my birthday was, after this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. <laughs> So, all scripture is, is uh, given for edification, but uh, not always appropriate for every day, maybe. maybe. Um, so, anyway, uh, there's a time and a place for everything. So we did end, end up reading chapter 3 and 4 and 5 and so on, but <clears throat> we'll go back to really chapter 1, my favorite verse after Job hears that everything he owns has been destroyed, all of his loved ones have been killed, except for his wife, and Satan left her alive because he used her to tempt Job again in a few verses down. But Job does not falter in his faith. He comes and says, in verse 20 it says, And then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. That's a good response. And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then it says, In all this Job, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And so that's, that's a really good thing to aspire to. Think back to the last time something bad happened to you. Is that, was that your first response? The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I mean, hopefully that's, that's the response we'd all have, but I know that's not always the case. Hmm. And uh, Job starts out really strong in the faith, and he does slip a little bit. I mean, the next chapter, it says, and all this did, did not Job sin with his lips, implying maybe he sinned in his heart at that point. But now his three friends come, and chapter 4, um, let's see... Well, it says the three friends came in chapter 3, and then it says, They sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. That was the best thing his friends ever did for him, was not speak. Um, but when they start speaking, they begin to accuse him and so on, saying, You must have sinned, you must have done something to deserve this, because God doesn't just punish people for no reason. And Job is answering them and getting more and more frustrated. Um, and uh, he's, he's saying, you guys are not doing a very good job of, of giving me good words and comforting words. Um, let see if I can. In chapter 12, Job says, No doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Yea, who, is known, who knoweth not such things as these? I am as one mocked of his neighbor, of his neighbor who calleth upon God, and he answereth him. The just upright man is laughed to scorn. So he's complaining that they're complaining about him. And eventually he's, he does get quite annoyed. Um, let's see, chapter 13, what ye know, the same do I know also. I am not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. So he wants to go talk to God on, on his throne. and So he has some pretty lofty aspirations. Um, but then there, and there was one... The, the, one of the funniest answers he gives in, in chapter 16. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Anyway. Um, but what I wanted to get to is a couple really interesting comments Job makes. Even though he's kind of falling into the despair and despondency, and he's, he's uh, very frustrated and very... Um, beginning to be very angry at God, he does say, 
Now I'm looking for it. There we go. So Job chapter 19. Verse 23. He says something very um, self-aware. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. So he got his wish. That they were graven with an iron pen and read in the rock forever. But then, because what he's about to say is very important. For I know that my Redeemer, my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though, that, though my reins be consumed within me. So he has a, a salvation message there. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and I'm going to see God. So he's saying over and over again, hey, I want to go see God and talk to him and argue about this thing. But he, he understands he will get to see God. He's going to die. He's going to go to heaven because he knows his Redeemer liveth who saved him. And uh, so that's, that was very powerful. Was very powerful words, again, however many thousands of years before Christ was born. Um, Job already had an understanding of that and was looking ahead to that. And, uh, and then he has one more very profound thing that we've, we got to, and this is what we were reading last night in chapter 23. Verse 8. Well, let's start in verse 3. So Job's lamenting that he cannot find God to go and complain to him personally about this thing that's happening to him. He says, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. So Job is commenting here. He can't see God specifically. God hasn't answered him about the thing he's complaining about. And God does that often. You ask him, you know, God, why this, why this, or help me with this? And God is silent. Not that he's silent altogether. He's just silent on that issue because he's teaching you something else. And it's not your time to know the answer to that. And even at the end of this book, God doesn't actually answer Job's questions. You know, why do you do this to me? He basically says, hey, you are a man. I'm God. That's all you need to know. And, but, but what Job's saying here is even though God hasn't specifically answered him, he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows he's supposed to keep the faith no matter what the trials that come. And when he comes forth, he's going to come forth as gold. He's going to be refined. And um, then he makes another comment. I have esteemed the words of his mouth, God's mouth, more than my necessary food. And what's the word of God's mouth? The Bible, right? So we should be esteeming the Bible more than food. If you miss reading scripture today because you were hungry for dinner, then your priorities are not straight. Don't let a, go, a day go by without reading God's word. It should not ever happen. If a day goes by without reading God's word, but you ate food, that's more important to you than the actual word of God? Man does not live by bread alone, right? But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that was, uh, that stood out to me last night. And then, but, I, but the coming forth as gold reminded me of 1 Peter. So let's move to 1 Peter for a bit. 1 Peter, chapter 1. So 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. That's why we use gold as the example for that, as a metaphor, because gold can go through the fire and come out clean. Verse 6, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love, in whom, though, ye, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. It's a long sentence, but I wanted to get through the sentence before I commented. Um, so, uh, he, um, Peter's making the point here that the, the trial of your faith is much more precious than of gold, because gold indeed does perish. If you put enough heat on it, it, it will eventually perish. Um, it, it lasts a whole lot longer than all the other materials that you're going to put in the fire, but it does eventually go away. It does eventually va uh, vanish. And so your faith is much more precious than that. It needs to actually last any temptation, any trial that God brings, or that God allows. And uh, so continuing, continuing on in verse 12, <clears throat> Peter gives the, uh, some more comments. Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you which the, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things that is the angels desire to look into. So what should we do then? Verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the formal lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's not just words, that's through your actions. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And that's, that's one of the reasons... We can't be in heaven without the blood of Christ because we are not holy. There's always going to be some blemish. We have to be holy. How do you be holy? By the covering of Christ, right? And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. That's why Job knew about it. But was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and the, all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by which, which by the gospel is preached unto you. So I just got carried away and kept going. But the, the, um, the message is, is all one message. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to Christ through all the temptations, through all the trials. Why? Because when you come forth, you'll be tried as fire, uh, with fire as, as gold, but inheritance that is, you'll have an inheritance that is not corruptible, even though gold can be. And so that uh, fits what, what Job was saying, and Job had a little glimpse of it. Peter lays it out in more detail here, the whole theology of it, but it's, they're saying the same, same message. Um, and there's one more section that talks about um, 
go, there's actually a whole bunch of sections, but I'm just going to read one quick verse here in Isaiah chapter 48, talking about when Israel comes back at the last days. God says in verse 9, For my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, thee being Israel, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. So at the end time, God, for his own sake, is going to refine Israel. And we see the 144,000 as an example there in Revelation. And he's saying, I'm doing it for myself, because I made a promise, and I'm going to keep that. I don't want my name polluted. And he's not going to give his glory to another. So that's something to look forward to. And Peter is talking about these trials that are coming on us in the last days. So we need to be ready and be prepared and have the response of Job when that happens. The Lord gives, the Lord takes us away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are not going to falter. We're going to continue to be obedient, continue to follow him in everything that we do. And so when we do communion, we remember exactly why we have the faith. Because... Uh, as Paul says in another, in, in another uh, epistle, if, if Je Jesus didn't die and risen again, then our faith is in vain. And so we have to remember that he gave his life for us. He shed his uh, blood, he broke his body, and we have to remember him. And so that's why we have uh, communion. So let's, I mean, if I can have three volunteers to come up.